depiction of terrible despair where there's no hope or rest. The frightening truth is, it's a horror-filled place reserved for those who choose to reject the way, the truth, and the life. Now, try to imagine what forever will feel like without Jesus. Blessings to you once more. I am Pastor Mark, and I do thank you for tuning in to today's Words of Life broadcast. I am going to begin today's telecast with a simple yet sobering question for us. If Jesus showed up right now, are we prepared to account for what we were doing at the very moment of his arrival? And would we be proud of it? Wow. Let's see what God's word, his words of life, have to say about us being prepared for Jesus Christ impending arrival. We thank you for joining our Words of Life broadcast every Saturday night from 8 to 8.30 p.m. where our mission is persuading the lost, perfecting each believer, and equipping all for service with practical application from God's word. We now join Pastor Mark for this week's words of life in today's opening scripture i would like to begin our message today by reading from the book of luke chapter 21 and i am going to begin at verse 33 this is the isv version and our reading is as follows heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away this is jesus talking Constantly be on your guard so that your hearts will not be loaded down with self-indulgence, drunkenness, and the worries of this life. Or that day will take you by surprise like a trap because it will come on everyone that day who lives on the face of the earth. So be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to take your stand in the presence of the Son of Man. That verse that I concluded with was verse 36 of Luke chapter 21. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, but most importantly, those that try to earnestly do His holy word. The title that I would like for us to consider this week is a perpetual state of readiness. A perpetual state of readiness. I will begin this week's message with a frightening dream that I experienced a couple of days ago, and it is the very reason for this particular message today. I was awakened, afraid to go back to sleep due to this horrible dream. I was speaking to a person in the dream, and mid-sentence, we heard a terrifying, loud bang. I immediately shot upward, zooming through the sky, and literally saw an American Airlines plane still in flight. I screamed, thank you, Jesus, is finally here, the rapture. I was then startled awake, but quickly became dejected. I was angry because the dream was too vivid for it to be just a dream and we were still here. Now, I'm certain that God had not informed me in a dream of the day of his return because no one knows that day or hour, but who goes back to sleep comfortably after that? So I asked God, what was that about? And I heard one sentence in my spirit a perpetual state of readiness. Now, 
understand that I know why that's applicable, but I immediately realized why my heart pumped with fear and I was angry and dejected. The person in the dream whom I was speaking with, they were not caught up or raptured. They were left behind and I had no opportunity to latch on to them, to transport them with me. I thought about that dream for a while and I hope that I never experienced another dream like that because I think it's too horrible a thought ministering to a person, but you are snatched away from them without warning and without further ability to help in any kind of way. With continuing warning signs that are present in a world that hurdles towards an intimate encounter with the holy maker of all that has ever existed. Jesus warns his followers, as well as those of us listening, that we must be ready because there will be no time to get ready. When we say a perpetual state of readiness, perpetual simply means to be continuous or uninterrupted. It means lasting forever or indefinitely. To be ready simply means that you are all set to go. To be ready means that you are standing by or you are geared to go. You are prepared in advance for immediate action. Case in point, airport departures. Airport departures, if you have a flight to catch, that is not the time to start packing. That is not the time to show up late. If you witness one running through an airport, chances are someone was not prepared in advance. Someone was not ready to meet their flight obligations. If you look at a sporting race, it requires that the participant adopt a ready position. In other words, get ready to run, be ready to take off, get ready to dive or jump. In other words, you are to be prepared for action. Understand that within these last days, again, we are commanded to be ready for Jesus' arrival and our impending departures from this earth because we will not be given time to get ready on that day. Consequently, a perpetual state of readiness is being ready at a moment's notice to live in God's presence continuously or live without God's presence in horror uninterrupted. We must be ready because the getting ready stage, we are living in that moment right now. And as we hear this message, if God so allowed you to tune in to this radio or video broadcast to hear this message that I'm ministering right now, it is simply a loving warning for us to examine ourselves with this spiritual check. Am I ready to meet Jesus if he unexpectedly showed up without notification? After what he did to my sister? Just say the word. You say the word, I make him a ghost. God, why here? Why me? Is that what you do, Papa? that spoke to you speaks to me as well. 
that sent you here so that you can see in a new way. Let's review our text real quick because within the context of Jesus teaching his followers, he warns them about the surrounding signs to look for concerning the judgment of Judea, but these lessons and signs, they remain applicable to us also. In verse 34, he says, constantly be on guard. In other words, take heed of yourselves. Another way of saying it is, be careful and be on the lookout for Jesus' return, lest we be loaded down with self-indulgence, drunkenness, and the worries of this life. And he warns them, if you are worried, that, worried or loaded down with these things, that day of my return, it will take you by surprise. Symbolically speaking, who amongst us wants to be caught with our hands in the cookie jar when our parents have already forewarned us about the consequences of getting caught. Verse 35 indicates that that day, a day of judgment, Jesus' return, it is forthcoming, and they shouldn't be caught unawares of the evil times or the days that would abruptly befall the nations then. Ecclesiastes 9 and 12 says this, but says it the same, but it in a different verse. Says it this way. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snare, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. Let me continue to momentarily deviate from our opening text to see if God's word warns us of the same types of behaviors that we too, in our present day and age, we can set our spiritual clocks by looking for Christ's return. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Going through verse 5, this is the God's word version. You must understand this. In the last days, there will be violent periods of time. People will be selfish and love money. They will brag. They will be arrogant. They will use abusive language. They will curse their parents. They will show no gratitude. They will have no respect for what is holy. They will lack normal affection for their families. They will refuse to make peace with anyone. They will be slanderous. They will lack self-control. They will be brutal. They will have no love for what is good. They will be traitors. They will be reckless and conceited. They will love pleasure rather than God. They will appear to live or have a godly life, but they will not let its power change them. Stay away from such people the writer admonishes his young protege. Wow, it is 2013 and God's word is still nailing this thing right on the head. For in our opening verse, Jesus instructs, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That is amazing. So as we begin our transition from the text, to what we must do to apply today's words of life to our, uh, to our lives. What we have to do to apply today's words of life to our lives. We're going to pause right here for our weekly Song of the Week segment. Our prayer is that you are ministered to by our melodic offering of the week. And that we keep our promise to you in putting forth music on this show Though genres may differ, understand our purpose is to put forth music on this show that not only ministers to you in music, but the one constant that you will always find will be this. You will always be able to hear the gospel music, the gospel message within each selection. Here is Jacob DeLuna with Judgment Day right here on The Words of Life. Sure.
for the signs are very clear Maybe he'll be back here tomorrow It could have been back here yesterday There's only one thing that'll bring me sorrow And that's if you get left behind Get left behind, get left behind On Judgment Day Judgment Day On Judgment Day Now I can't tell you who to follow All I can say is that I'm saved It's gonna be a day of his reckoning of life show is that Jacob DeLuna's Judgment Day has inspired us to look forward to that day with reverence and excitement instead of the horror inherent in facing God without having Jesus as the only Savior that God will accept. As we make our transition from the text to relevant applicable points for our lives, here's the question we must ask ourselves now. How can we ensure that we are in a continual, uninterrupted, perpetual state of readiness to meet Jesus? That doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. That doesn't mean we're never going to mess up. I just want us to understand that we can do things to ensure that we are in a perpetual state of readiness if Jesus just pops up unexpectedly. Well, point number one, the first thing we can do is, point number one is, be alert at all times. In the opening verses of today's text, verse 36 warns us, but keep on the alert at all times. Watch ye therefore. Or another translation says, be watching at all times. Luke 12 and 40 lets us know, you must also be Ready, Jesus warns his disciples, because the Son of Man, he instructs them, will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Matthew 24 and 43, Jesus teaches, but understand this, if the owner of a house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. We are admonished to keep watch, to stay on guard, to be alert for the moment of Christ appearing, for it can occur at any moment, even as we listen to this broadcast. One of the greatest fear factors that I believe God utilized to save me was Jude 1 and 23. That verse says, save others by snatching them from the fire or the fear of hell. I want to be transparent right here because while I was yet in sin over 12 years ago before I began preaching the word and even understand I'm a preacher's kid so I've got nothing but the word for over 35 of my 44 years of life. But while I was yet a sinner, it wasn't too much fun being high, drunk, or entangled with consistent and willful sin because in my sin it became terrifying for me because I was always peeking through my closed blinds thinking what if Jesus came back right now and I'm doing what I'm doing that is a very sobering and scary thought 
and I drive around right now, and any unexpected loud sound will cause me to immediately look upward and examine myself for my readiness to get off of planet Earth. It certainly makes me do an immediate, Lord, any sin, known or unknown, forgive me of. I think we must remain alert, we must remain watchful and ready if we are to be in a perpetual state of readiness that ushers us into eternity. How can we further make certain that we are in a continual, uninterrupted, perpetual state of readiness to meet Jesus? Well, point number two. Point number two is we should pray for strength to escape God's judgment of this world. Now, Someone listening or watching might wonder, why would a loving God judge this world and human inhabitants so harshly? Well, God is holy, and he cannot and will never tolerate sin. We humans were born into sin because of the devil's fall impacting mankind through the deception of Adam and Eve. God then made a way to reconcile humans back to him, and he provided a free gift. And all we have to do is accept that gift, Jesus Christ. And here now is the answer to why God must judge the world. It will be because of the continual, willful, and unrepentant pattern of living in sin due to rejecting or refusing to accept God's gracious offer of salvation and forgiveness found only in one person, his son, Jesus Christ. God, in so many words, is saying, you will not trample over or treat my son's sacrifice of his blood. You will not ignore or treat that irreverently. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 lets us know that people perish because they did not accept the love of the truth in order to be saved. Jesus has taught us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are saved, it is the power of of God. Revelation 6, beginning at verse 12, I watched as the Lamb opened the sixth seal. A powerful earthquake struck. The sun turned as black as sackcloth made of hair. The full moon turned as red as blood. The stars fell from the sky to the earth like figs dropping from a fig tree when it's shaken by a strong wind. The sky vanished like a scroll being rolled up. Every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the important people, the generals, the rich, the powerful, all the slaves and free people hid themselves in caves and among the rocks in the mountains. They said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the anger of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? I cannot speak for anyone else, but I have no desire to be here when all of that pops off. I would like to be securely on the other side of heaven, behind God, safely out of harm's way, as a child standing behind Daddy when all of that goes down. Therefore, it is our responsibility to pray for the strength to escape the things in this world that can easily entangle us and cause frequent self-indulgent sinning, leaving us woefully unprepared for Jesus' unannounced arrival. So as we conclude today's message, is there anything else our opening text reveals that would assist us in being in a perpetual state of readiness? Yes, there is. 
The final verse of our opening text, verse 36, gives us hope of one day standing in God's presence on his good side because we have accepted Jesus as Savior instead of the alternative. Thereby, thereby we must continually, point number three, we must continually reverence standing in God's presence. You know, I was astonished at the verse that I'm about to read because it let me know that I needed to do a better job of how I approach God, even in prayer. So often and easily, we can dismiss the all that God is, and we do so by uttering phrases such as, God is so holy. Well, as compared to what? Holy? God does not have levels of holiness. He is just holy. Reverence simply means that we are to have awe, worship, respect, amazement, and astonishment. So let's see if the text hits you like it did me as I lazily woke up and entered my set-aside place in my home to convene with our holy creator. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet says, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and lofty throne. The bottom of his robe filled the temple. Angels were standing above him. Each had six wings. They covered their faces with two of their wings. With the other two, they covered their feet. And with the other two, they flew. They called to each other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the foundations of the doorposts and the temple filled with smoke. How terrible it will be for me, the prophet cried, because I am ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips. I live among a people with unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of the heavenly armies. We must recognize that God has never been and will never be on our level. We cannot reduce the plumb line of God's essence by disrespectfully referring to him as the man upstairs, big guy, or big chief on high. As we maintain a perpetual state of readiness, we have to ensure that we also have to preserve an accurate account of who our creator is. He is God, he is holy, and he will not be irreverently disrespected. important prayer that we can offer you today is for the one who admits that they are uncertain if they are prepared to meet God. So let's take care of that right now by closing with this earnest prayer together with words of life found in Romans 10 and 9. I just want you to earnestly pray this with me. Dear Lord, I confess with my mouth right now and I believe in my heart that you gave Jesus as a gift to die for me. Jesus has risen and I am now prepared to meet him when the time comes for me to do so. I am now saved. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray together, amen. Listener or viewer, until next week, I encourage you to speak words of life, that is, God's word over you, your loved one, or your circumstances. God bless you.
We thank you for listening to Words of Life with Pastor Mark D. Ingram. We request your prayerful consideration in partnering with us to support our sole purpose of spreading the good news of Jesus Christ with your monetary donation. You may visit our website at wolchristiancenter.org or contact us here at thewordfm.com.